In this module, we are going to talk about iOS feature called Service Level Agreements or IPSLA and we are going to mention also how it can be used in conjunction with the object tracking feature. So what we are going to really discuss now is how we can keep an eye on the operational state of the network. Are the services in our network operating? And we are going to look beyond the mere presence of the routes in the routing table. And also we are going to look how we can actually use this information from the operational state of our network to influence routing decisions. Basically speaking, IPSLA operations consist of two parts. The first part is the actual operation, sometimes referred to as a probe. What kind of test are we going to be performing in our network? And this can be things like, for example, the reachability test, the measurement of the delay or the measurement of the delay variation, which is called jitter. And this can be measured using ICMP ping, ICMP echo packets, or it can be measured using dedicated UDP generated traffic as well. On top of that, we can measure the actual operations of some of the network services. So not only looking, do can we ping the host, is the other side responding to UDP packets, but we can actually measure the application behavior, like, like for example, the DNS, the HTTP, DHCP, FTP, we can measure the performance of the voice traffic and so on. So this is what IPSLA refers to as an operation, as a probe. So we are going to define a certain operation, we are going to define a certain test, and then the second part of the IPSLA um, infrastructure is the actual schedule. When are we going to run this operation? How long are we going to be running this operation for? And then if we are not going to be running it continuously, what is going to be the recurrence of this operation. Are we going to be running it once per day, once an hour, two times a day, three times a day, and so on. Let's set up a sample operation. The simplest one would be to configure a simple ICMP probe, a simple ICMP ping between two directly connected hosts. And here is that operation here defined. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating an IPSLA operation one. So each operation needs to be uniquely identified with the number. And I'm saying that this will be an ICMP echo operation. And here I'm simply specifying which destination IP address am I going to ping. And here the frequency five simply means send this ping request every five seconds. Now, defining the IPSLA operation like this does not mean that this IPSLA operation will be active. In order to activate the IPSLA operation, we actually need to schedule it to run. And here is a sample schedule that is going to start this operation one. So there it is, IPSLA schedule one. It is going to start at the time when we type this command and it's going to run forever. So basically what we are saying, every five seconds send ping to this address. But our operation doesn't have to be so simple. It could be a little bit more involved. So here is the operation number two. It is still ICMP echo operation. I'm going to be pinging IP address 10001, but this time instead of using whatever interface is closest to the destination, which is going to be the situation here, I'm specifying the source interface loopback zero. And also I will be pinging this particular IP address from this loopback every 10 seconds. And here is the schedule for that. So here I'm scheduling operation number two to start at the time of typing the command, but I'm going to run this operation for only 30 seconds, which basically means I'm going to send three pings 10 seconds apart and then this operation number two is going to stop operating. Let's take a look this in action. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have a very simple network configured. I'm going to have my R1 and R2 directly connected and they're going to be connected on gigabit interface one on both sides and I'm going to have IP addresses 192.168.12.0 slash 24 between them 
and they are both going to have the loopback interfaces. So I'm going to have here loopback with the address 10001 and here I will have the loopback with the address 10002. So what I want to do now is I want to configure the probe on R2 here, IPSLA probe number one. So I want to be sending this ping as defined here. So I want to be pinging, or actually let me configure this. Um, so this is going to be one here. So I want to be pinging 192.168.12.1, so the IP address of R1, every five seconds, and I want to run this operation forever. Let me start by configuring this first. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that on R2, I actually do have the routes that I need. So what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for a directly connected route on gigabit interface one, and I can see that I have 192.168.12.0. I can also see that 10.0.0.1 is statically routed through R1's address here. So what I'm going to start doing here is I want to make sure that I can ping R1 both the directly connected interface and that I can ping between the loopbacks. I can see that and this works because on R1 I have a fairly similar setup there. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to configure my IPSLA probe. I'm going to say IPSLA1 and when I press enter here I'm going to go into the IPSLA sub configuration mode and here I can specify what kind of operation I'm going to be running and as you can see here there are many of them that we can configure, but we are going to go in this example with the simplest one. We want to configure the ICMP echo operation. So I'm going to say ICMP echo, and now I'm given the option of which IP address I want to send this traffic to. So in this case, it will be my 192.168.12.1. So I have now entered yet another sub configuration mode where I can configure various things. So I'm going to set my frequency here and I don't remember what was the frequency that I wanted to use and I can see here that I wanted to use frequency 5 so let's use frequency 5. Now I'm going to exit this configuration and what I want to see now is that I do have my SLA configured but it is not working if I do IP SLA statistics I will see that I do have IP SLA operation 1 defined and number of successes is unknown and number of failures is unknown. It is unknown because this probe isn't actually running. So what I can do here if I do show IPSLA summary, what I'm going to see here is that I indeed have probe number one configured. But if we take a look at this little caret sign here, it tells me that this probe is inactive. I can see it is actually configured. I can see ICMP echo, I can see the destination here, and it's going to give me here some nonsense number that this was first configured two hours and 41 minutes ago. First time when I've seen this, I was like, hey, hold on a second. Have I configured this two hours ago? Did I spend two hours actually looking at question mark when I was configuring it? And the answer is no. This is just some number that comes from somewhere in the iOS. I really don't know where this number is coming from. So you will have this thing here displayed incorrectly when you, when you see this. And the return code here says unknown because the, the operation isn't actually running. So let's make our operation run. So what I'm going to say here is I'm going to say IPSLA schedule and here I need to specify, okay, which operation I'm scheduling to run. I'm scheduling operation number one and again I have multiple options so what I'm going to say is start time. I want to start running it now and I'm going to say that it wants to live forever. So I want to start it now and I want it to keep on going. Now the default life, the default duration of the probe will be 3600 seconds. So it will be running for 3000 600 seconds, which if I'm not much mistaken is one hour. So now I have scheduled my operation to run and if I do show IP SLA summary, now I can see here that this operation is no longer inactive, it is now in the active state. And I can see again that it is ICMP echo, that this is the destination, that this is the statistic, the, the last uh, 
operation resulted in a round trip time of one millisecond and it was okay. And I can see that it was running one second ago when I actually looked at this command here. I can also look at show IP SLA configuration and with this command here I'm going to get just much more information about how this operation has been configured. I will see here, for example, let me uh, scroll this all the way up. Here I will see, for example, what is the entry number that we are looking at, what is the operational timeout, and I can see that the timeout here will be five seconds, what is the type of operation, what is the source IP address, and what is going, uh, sorry, what is the destination IP address, and what will be the source. This simply means dynamically determined at runtime. When we need to generate the packet, use whatever interface is closest to the destination. We can specify the type of service, and so on and so on. What is the VRF for it? Are we going to verify the data in the return? And so on. And here we have even more details about the actual schedule. So you can take a look at this output. It's relatively easy to understand. Yet another command that you might want to remember is show IPSLA statistics. And with this one here, we are simply going to see what is the uh, operation number. If we have multiple operations, we are going to see them in sequence. What was the latest route, round trip time? What was the la latest operation start time? The latest operation code? And we are going to see here how many times the operation succeeded and how many times it failed. And here we are going to see how much longer does this operation have to live. Now, one question that might be popping into your mind right now is, first of all, when this operation runs, how many packets are sent? Well, in the case of ICMP uh, echo, there will be one packet sent. So given our configuration that we have here, that every five seconds, every five seconds, we are going to be sending a single ICMP packet. And every five seconds for the duration of pretty much as long as the router is up and running. Now let's take a look at this other operation here. So now I'm going to specify probe number two. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say IPSLA2 and I'm going to say this is ICMP echo. I want to ping 10.0.0.0.1 but in this case I want to use source interface. I can either specify the source interface by, I, by name or source IP address and in this case I will use source interface loopback zero. And here I want to use frequency of 10 and when I schedule it and I can verify now that show IPSLA summary, I can verify now that number two is inactive here and again I have this two hours and whatever 40 minutes, complete nonsense value but I can see that number one is operating properly. So now I can schedule it so I'm going to say IPSLA schedule number two and I want to start running it now and I want it to live for 30 seconds. So before I proceed with this, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go to my handy Wireshark here and I'm going to start capturing the traffic on gigabit interface one. So we can see that our probe number one works and we can tell this is probe number one based on the source and destination IP of the traffic. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to say that I want IP source address to be 10.0.0.2 because I'm interested only in traffic that goes from the loopback interface. So going here now, I'm going to start scheduling my probe. Now I can see, I'm, let, let's see traffic in both directions. I can see now that again, this is the first operation here was running then we had the second operation running here and we should have the third operation running here. But we should see no more of these operations running because remember what we said, we said start this operation now and run it for 30 seconds and send packet every 10 seconds. So we should be seeing just three pings and we have seen just three pings here. So if you go back to R2 and if you do show IP SLA statistics, this is what I will see now for my IP SLA 2 operation. I will see here 
that number of successes was three, number of failures was zero, and operational time to live is zero, which means that this operation is no longer active. If I do show IPSLA summary, I will pretty much see the same thing. I can see now that my operation number two is inactive. It ran 49 seconds ago. It was a successful operation with a round trip time of one, but now it's no longer running. So this was ICMP echo, but with iOS using ICMP echo to say, measure a round trip time, and in this case is one millisecond, it doesn't really get any better than that, may not be as reliable as you think, because the way ICMP traffic is processed, it is prone to some delays when it arrives to Cisco routers. If we actually want to measure the performance of our network, it might be a better idea to use, say, UDP traffic. So how can we use IPSLA subsystem to measure the performance of, say, UDP traffic? In other words, how can we configure our routers to send UDP traffic and get response as the result? Let's take a look at that next. What we are going to be configuring is something that iOS calls UDP echo operation or UDP echo probe. And as you can see, the configuration is very similar to what we had before. We are going to define an IPSLA operation. And this time, what we are going to do is we are going to send UDP traffic from the loopback of R1 to loopback of R2. And I want this to be UDP traffic. So here I'm going to say instead of specifying ICMP echo, I'm going to specify UDP echo. I'm specifying the destination IP address of the traffic and the destination port. I can choose any port and I have chosen 18,427, which incidentally happens to be my CCI number. It's good number as any. And here I'm going to specify a source IP address. Now keep in mind that unlike ICMP echo, here you cannot specify the source interface. You need to specify the source IP address. So I'm going to specify the loopback of R1. Furthermore, what I could specify as well would be the source port if I want that to be fixed. If I don't specify the source port, the router will it's on its own choose the source port number. And finally here, I define the frequency. So I'm going to be sending these UDP packets to 18,427 every 10 seconds. And here I'm going to schedule this operation. I'm going to start it whenever I type this command and I'm going to let it run three times. So let's head over to R1 and configure this. So I'm going to say IPSLA1. I'm going to specify that this is going to be the UDP echo operation and it is going to be sent to 10.0.0.2.18,427 and the source, and here you can see that I have only two options, source port or source IP, and I'm going to specify the source IP of 10.0.0.1. So if I do show IPSLA uh, summary, I'm going to see now that this echo probe is configured and again you can see this silly little value here that is showing up by default, but I can see that this is an inactive probe. It's inactive because I have not scheduled it. So let's schedule it to run. So I'm going to say IPSLA1 or actually IPSLA schedule 1 start time now and I'm going to give it life of 30 seconds. So if I do show IPSLA summary, what I should be seeing now is that this operation should be running at this moment, but what I'm seeing here is something that I'm not expecting. Oh, there we have it. Now, 15 seconds ago, so it did take some time, it says no connection. Well, okay, UDP no connection makes sense. UDP is a connectionless protocol. So let's take a look at the state statistics here. Show IP SLA statistics for SLA probe one. So if I take a look at this here, I can see, yeah, there is no connection. That should be okay. But in this term here, connection means, hey, you know, we sent the packet, but nothing really responded on the other side. And here we have number of failures, one. So by now, maybe we should even have one, but look, it's not even that is happening. So what is going on here? Well, what is going on here is that 
just configuring a UDP operation on one side, on our R1 in this case. So we are sending the UDP traffic here to R2. But by default, there is nothing configured on R2 to actually respond to this traffic. So when you are configuring between two routers, any operation that doesn't involve simple ping, which is the ICMP echo, we need to actually configure something extra. That something extra is a feature that iOS calls IPSLA responder. And luckily, in its most basic configuration, this is all you have to do. All we have to do is go to R2 and say IPSLA responder. So let's go ahead and do that on R2. But before I do that, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove this schedule and I'm going to remove IPSLA operation one and I'm going to add it back in, but I'm not going to add the schedule back in. I'm going to copy paste it here because what I would like to do is after I have enabled the responder on R2, I want to go to Wireshark and I want to capture the traffic. I want to show you a thing or two. So I'm going to go to R2 and very, very simply, I'm going to say IPSLA responder. Very simple. Now, let's prepare our Wireshark. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change my filter in such a way that I have the source IP address of 10.0.0.1 or source IP address of 10.0.0.2 and I want this traffic to actually be UDP. And I'm going to start capturing the traffic. At the moment, I have nothing because my probe, or my operation has not been scheduled. Now, if I go to R1, I should be sending some traffic. But this doesn't at all look like the traffic I have configured. Here, I can see that there was a UDP packet sent, and there it is. This is the first one. I can see that the source was some random port number. This is what I expected to see. But I can see here that the destination port was 1967. Okay, not what I configured, but fine. If I take a look at this packet here now, this does look like the port I have configured. So. First, I got this packet here that I don't quite understand. And then there was this packet here that I did understand and that I did want to get. Now, where are the other packets? Where is everything else? Where is the, uh, the second uh, operation? Well, maybe I mistyped something. So let me go back to my, uh, to my Wireshark here. And yes, what I have forgotten to do here is I have not configured the frequency. Oh, silly me. I wanted to configure the frequency here of 10. I forgot to do that. So let me uh, remove the schedule. I'm going to remove IPSLA1. I'm going to add this back in. I'm going to say frequency. You know what? Let's make it five seconds, even faster. And I'm going to start the schedule now. But before I actually do that, let me restart this capture here. And now, this is what I'm seeing. So I'm again seeing that there was this unusual traffic, this traffic to 1967 cent. And then let me uh, expand this a little bit so that we can see this whole thing in place. So what I'm seeing here is that there are going to be these four packets sent, or actually, First, there is going to be this pair of packets sent to this unusual IP address. Then there is going to be what I want. And then the same pattern pretty much repeats itself. One, two, three, four. And then one, two, three, four repeats itself and goes on until the, the operation actually times out. So what is this all about? What, what, does this, what does this do? What is this configuration? Well. Let me not keep you in suspense anymore. When I have configured this SLA responder here, I have not said or I have not informed R2 where to respond. So if I do show IP SLA responder here, what I'm going to see here is one piece of output that is rather interesting. 
it's going to say number of control messages received, seven. Now, what does this mean? Well, what that means is that before the IPSLA, the actual operation goes in, R1 is first going to communicate to R2, telling it, hey, you know what, I'm about to send the operation and I will be using this particular source IP address and this particular source port number, get ready for it. And R2 says, okay, ready for it. And then the actual operation goes out and the actual response go in. This is why we were seeing these two pairs of operations. And I have never actually looked at these control messages, but if we expand this here in the data, well, we, we cannot decode this. It's not, it's not user readable operation. So un unfortunately, we cannot decode this data output and it would take us far too long time to do it. So we, we cannot see that actual communication that happens between them. But this is sort of a Cisco proprietary protocol that they implemented to solve this. So right now, this doesn't really do what I wanted it to do. I just wanted to send those 18427 packets. Is there any way that I can avoid using this Cisco proprietary control protocol? Well, yes, there is. And to do that, what I need to do is configure the UDP echo operation without the control traffic. And the configuration is very, very similar to what we had here. All I have to do here is somewhere on the line where I'm defining the UDP echo operation, say control disable. Everything else is the same. So let's go ahead and actually configure that. So I'm going to go to R1 here and I'm going to turn off this schedule. And I'm going to say no IP SLA1. And then I'm going to say IP SLA1. Going to define this and I'm going to say control disable here and I'm going to say frequency 10. Now I'm going to say IP SLA1 schedule one life. Actually, uh, uh, it, it doesn't matter which order I use. So start time now and life for 30 seconds. Before I press enter, I'm going to go to my Wireshark and I'm going to restart the capture. And let's see, oops, it's schedule one like this. Now let's go here and see what is happening. Now this is not a good output. What is happening is that now I am sending the traffic that I want to send. I can see here that the destination port is 18427, but now R2 is telling me, hey, you know what? Sorry, this is unreachable. It is unreachable because now R2 doesn't have a way to determine which port to open. So it just says, well, uh, this port is not open. I'm not going to be listening on all the ports. We have turned off the control communication between R1 and R2. Is there a way around this? Well, as it turns out, of course there is a way around that. And the way around that is to actually configure the UDP responder for a particular traffic. Now keep in mind that we first have to enable the responder and then we de define a particular responder here that is going to be a UDP echo responder and optionally we can specify the IP address and optionally we can specify the port number on which to listen. Either one is fine, but we have to define at least one of them. So let's now go to R2 and let's define our IP SLA responder for UDP echo. I'm going to define IP address 10002 and port number 18427. And before I do that, I'm going to turn off this schedule here, going to prepare it to run, going to go into my Wireshark, restart the capture, go here. I'm going to now start the responder. And if I do show IP SLA responder, I should be seeing now that what I do have is a permanent port IP SLA responder that works for UDP echo on IP address 10002 and port number 18427. So R2 is now ready to respond to this traffic. And now on R1, I'm going to start the schedule and going to my Wireshark, now I see that I'm receiving only the traffic that I care about. I can see that the traffic was sent from R1 to R2 and that we got the response. Now there is another 
one and we got the response. There will be a third one and then this is going to end. Remember, we set the frequency to 10 seconds. So there it is. There is a response and we should be getting no more. And if I go back to my terminal here on R1, if I do show IPSLA statistics, I will see here that there was uh, three successful attempts, there were three successful operations, there were zero failures and the operation time to live. That means how, many how much more uh, is this scheduled to run for E0, which means it's no longer running. And we can confirm that, that here we had just three pairs of packets being sent and received. So this is how IPSLA operations and scheduling work in Cisco IS. So other than entertainment and amusement, what can these IPSLA probes be used for? Well, they can be used to measure the performance of our network, but on its own, this is not very useful information. But what they can be used with is in combination with features that are somehow not responsive to the changes in the network. And one of the features that this is very, very commonly used with are static routes. So how can IPSLA probes used in combination with static routes? Well, let's take a look at one of the problems that we have with static routes. So here on R1, we have a static route that helps R1 reach this interface here, 10.0.0.2. And this here is the next hop for this interface. So R1 is now statically configured to send the traffic to 10.0.0.2 over through this interface here. Let's go to R2 now and shut this loop back down. So I'm going to go to R2, interface loopback 2, shut down. So I have now turned off the loopback. If I do show IP route static on R1, I can still see this route in here. And I'm going to see this route here because there is no relationship between the com configuration on R2 and on R1. Now, wouldn't it be nice if R1 had the ability to not keep this static route in its routing table unless that loopback, for example, was responding to UDP probes sent to the UDP port 18427? Well, that can be done. And we already know how to check whether that is actually operational or not. But what we don't have is right now the knowledge how to combine these two together. But if you roll the film back a couple of videos that we did, there was one video in which I talked about tracking certain objects, tracking uh, interfaces being up or the routes being present and so on in the routing tables and then deciding which interface is going to be active in, say, HSRP or VRRP and GLBP. Well, that same infrastructure, tracking the objects, can be combined with active uh, operations, with active probes done by IPSLA, and then combined with static routing or even policy routing. Let me show you how that would work. So what we are going to do here on R1 is first we want to create an SLA policy that continuously runs. So here I'm going to first see that my schedule is not very good. So I'm going to change the schedule here to run forever. Okay, let me uh, actually then remove this and I'm going to start sending this UDP probe forever, right? So. I'm just every 10 seconds, I'm going to send out the UDP packet and expect the response back. If I do show IPSLA statistics, now I'm going to see that this is actually failing. It's obviously failing because the interface is shut down on R2. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a tracked object. Now, here with the tracking object, I have to give it some ID. Now, this ID doesn't have to be the same as the IPSLA probe, but for your sanity, it makes sense setting it the same. I'm deliberately going to set it to be something else. I'm just going to say track 100. And here I can track any sort of uh, uh, information. I can track the, inf uh, the interfaces, the uh, stub objects, whatever it is, or I can actually track the performance, the status of the IPSLA probe. So I can see here, I want to 
check the state of the IPSLA probe. And here I can uh, change the, uh, uh, the default object state or I can uh, configure the, uh, the delay after which this is going to take effect. So let's say that we want this to be immediately. So when it comes up, let's uh, wait maybe one second and when the interface goes, uh, when the uh, tracked uh, object goes down, let's wait nothing to see what is happening. So now, if I do show track, what I'm going to see now is that I'm tracking with object 100, I'm tracking the IPSLA state of SLA probe 1, and I can see now that this state is down. Let's bring it back up. So how do I bring it back up? I'm just simply going to say no shutdown on R2. And what I'm going to be looking at now is show IPSLA standby. So what I want to see, number of successes one, and if I do show track, remember that there is going to be about one second delay. I can see here now that my tracked object changed state from down to up, and I can actually see this in the output here. Now let's combine this with a static route. So if I take a look at the configuration of my static route, this is what I have now. Let me remove it from the routing table. And let me add it, add it back in, simply adding track 100 at the end. Oh, you don't see that. So there it is. So all I have done here is added track 100. Now, what we have created at this moment is something that some people in the industry jokingly call not so static routes. They call them not so static routes because this route will have the performance, will change its state based on how the tracked object 100 works. Now we can see that uh, it actually did change the state from up to down and that's because I removed the static route. And if I do show track, I can see that the state is down. And if I do show IPSLA statistics, what I'm going to be seeing here, I want to see either one of these two counters here increment. So it's either going to be number of successes or number of failures. And it's going to be number of failures is 18. Well, the problem there is that now this is actually relying on the presence of the static route that is now down. So what we have to do is we, we were unfortunate with the timing. So what I have to do now is I need to make sure that the IP route is in place and then I need to wait for the probe for my operation to succeed to show IP, ah, there it is. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the track there. Yeah, maybe I made a slight mistake there. So now let me remove this route here and leave only the one with the tracked object there. Very good. So now if I do show track, I can see that the state of the object is up. And we can see that the latest operation code is up. If I do show IPSLA statistics, I see number of successes 7, failures 21. Let's see 821. So we can see now that our route is in the routing table. Let's take the interface down here. So what I've done now is I have shut down the interface loopback zero on my R2. And what's going to happen now is we are going to see number of failures increase. And there it is. We have now 22 failures. And if I do show IP route static, I see that my route has actually disappeared from the routing table. So I am now actually not going to install that route unless I can ping that interface. Now, my unfortunate choice here is that that route, that the tracking object relies on the present of the route, that relies on the, on the success of that object. So it, it was a silly choice on my end. A much better choice to use here when you are using these track object would be, for example, to have R1 and R2. Let's say that they were connected behind a switch. And this is yet another very common problem in networking. So 
when we, they are connected behind the switch, logically they appear to be directly connected. But we don't know if, for example, this link here fails or it may be in a different VLAN. So this interface here will be up and this interface here will be up. So if on R1 we had a static route that was pointing to this interface here, as long as this interface is up, that static route becomes valid. So it's a very, very common configuration with the uh, track object and IP SLA probes to configure the IP SLA operation on R1 from this interface here to actually ping this interface here. And if this interface here is present, then based or is responding, then based on that result, use that with the track object for the static route that is going to provide us reachability with the loopback. But my unfortunate choice was that I was tracking the presence of this loop back here, or the, I was checking not for the presence, I was checking for the reachability of this loop back here, and the static route that was providing me the reachability was the one that was being tracked. So it was kind of a recursive problem. But even that will work in a case that, that we wanted to go down, but in my, the, if this loop back becomes reachable, it is never going to come back up. So let's create another IP SLA probe and another track object to fix my error. So what I'm going to do here now is on R1, I'm going to create IP SLA 2. And this is going to be a very simple ICMP echo. And I want to ping 192.168.12.2. And let's ping this every five seconds. And I'm going to say IP SLA schedule 2, start time now, life forever and let's use tracking object let's say 101 and I want to track IPSLA 2 and I want to set the delay down 0 and delay up 0 like this. So if I do show track 101 I can see now that this is okay if I do show IPSLA 2 statistics show IPSLA statistics 2, I can see here now that there were seven successes and every five seconds we are going to be sending the ping. Now let's take a look at the status of that IP route there, show run section IP route. Let's remove this route and let's put it back in with the tracked object 101. So show IP route static I can see that this route now is back in and show run include IP route. Now I can see that with this I'm tracking object 101. Let's now go to R2 and let's create a very simple access list. So let's say access list 100 deny uh, ICMP any any echo and let's say access list 100 permit IP any any. So I'm just going to drop any incoming echo packets, which is going to, if I apply this on an interface in the inbound direction on R2, like so, so IP access group 100 in, and if I do show access list, what I'm going to be seeing is when the next operation comes in, there it, there it is, I can see it was dropped, and I can see here that the tracked object 101 that was tracking IP SLA 2 change state to down. If I do show IP route static, I'm going to see that my static route disappeared from the routing table. So if I remove this access list here, what I'm going to be seeing on R1 is when the, the probe runs next time, when the operation runs next time, and I can see it here that it was running and it changed state from down to up, if I do show IP route static, I can see that my route came back in. So I can see that this actually works when you have made a wise choice of what you want to track and not an unwise one like I did.